सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंस मोमेंट्स एन इंग्लिश ऑडियो टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ नेरेटेड बाय निवेदिता सरदार नाउ लेट एस लिसन टू लेसन नंबर टेन द बेगर फ्रॉम पेज नंबर सिक्सटी टू टू सिक्सटी एट द ऑथर इज एंटन चेकव इंट्रोडक्शन वॉट इंड्यूस्ड द बेगर Lushkov to change his ways let's read and find out in the lesson the beggar kind sir have pity turn your attention to a poor hungry man for 3 days i have had nothing to eat i haven't 5 kopecks for a lodging i swear it before god For eight years, I was a village school teacher, and then I lost my place through intrigues. I fell a victim to calumny. It is a year now since I have had anything to do. The advocate Sergey looked at the ragged, fawn-colored overcoat of the suppliant, at his dull, drunken eyes. at the red spot on either cheek and it seemed to him as if he had seen this man somewhere before i have now had an offer of a position in the province of kaluga the mendicant went on but i haven't the money to get there help me kindly i am ashamed to ask but i am obliged to by circumstances sergey's eyes fell on the man's overshoes one of which was high and the other low and he suddenly remembered something look here it seems to me i met you the day before yesterday in sadovia street he said but you told me then that you were a student who had been expelled and not a village school teacher do you remember no no that can't be so mumbled the beggar taken aback i am a village school teacher and if you like i can show you my papers have done with lying you call yourself a student and even told me what you had been expelled for don't you remember Sergey flushed and turned from the ragged creature with an expression of disgust. "This is dishonesty, my dear sir," he cried angrily. "This is swindling. I shall send the police for you. Damn you!" "Sir," he said, laying his hand on his heart. "The fact is, I was lying." I am neither a student nor a school teacher. All that was fiction. Formerly, I sang in Russian choir, and was sent away for drunkenness. But what else can I do? I can't get along without lying. No one will give me anything when I tell the truth. What can I do? What can you do? You ask what you can do," cried Sergey, coming close to him. "Work, that's what you can do. You must work. Work. Yes, I know that myself. But where can I find work? How would you like to chop wood for me? I wouldn't refuse to do that. but in these days even skilled woodcutters find themselves sitting without bread will you come and chop wood for me yes sir i will very well we'll soon find out sergey hastened along rubbing his hands he called his cook out of the kitchen here olga he said take this gentleman into the wood shed and let him chop wood The scarecrow of a beggar shrugged his shoulders as if 
in perplexity and went irresolutely after the cook. It was obvious from his gait that he had not consented to go and chop wood because he was hungry and wanted work, but simply from pride and shame and because he had been trapped by his own words. It was obvious too that his strength had been undermined by vodka and that he was unhealthy and did not feel the slightest inclination for toil. Sergei hurried into the dining room. From its windows, one could see the woodshed and everything that went on in the yard. Standing at the window, Sergei saw the cook and the beggar come out into the yard by the back door and make their way across the dirty snow to the shed. Olga glared wrathfully at her companion, shoved him aside with her elbow, unlocked the shed and angrily banged the door. Next, he saw the pseudo-teacher seat himself on a log and become lost in thought with his red cheeks resting on his fists. The woman flung down an axe at his feet spat angrily and judging from the expression of her lips began to scold him. The beggar irresolutely pulled a billet of wood towards him, set it up between his feet and tapped it feebly with the axe. The billet wavered and fell down. The beggar again pulled it to him, blew on his freezing hand and tapped it with his axe cautiously as if afraid of hitting his overshoe or of cutting off his finger. The stick of wood again fell to the ground. Sergei's anger had vanished and he now began to feel a little sorry and ashamed of himself for having set a spoiled, drunken, perhaps sick man to work at menial labour in the cold. An hour later, Olga came in and announced that the wood had all been chopped. Good, give him half a rouble, said Sergei. If he wants to, he can come back and cut wood on the first day of each month. We can always find work for him. On the first of the month, the waif made his appearance and again earned half a rouble, although he could barely stand on his legs. From that day on, he often appeared in the yard, and every time work was found for him. Now he would shovel snow, now put the woodshed in order, now beat the dust out of rugs and mattresses. Every time he received from twenty to forty kopecks, and once even a pair of old trousers were sent out to him. When Sergei moved into another house, he hired him to help in the packing and hauling of the furniture. This time, the waif was sober, gloomy and silent. He hardly touched the furniture and walked behind the wagons, hanging his head not even making a pretense of appearing busy. He only shivered in the cold and became embarrassed when the carters jeered at him for his idleness, his feebleness and his tattered fancy overcoat. After the moving was over, Sergei sent for him. Well, I am happy that my words have taken effect, he said, handing him a rouble. Here's for your pains. I see you are sober and have no objection to work. What is your name? Lushkov. Well, Lushkov, I can now offer you some other, cleaner employment. Can you write? I can. Then 
take this letter to a friend of mine tomorrow and you will be given some copying to do work hard don't drink and remember what i have said to you good bye please that having put a man on the right path sergey tapped lushkov kindly on the shoulder and even gave him his hand at parting lushkov took the letter and from that day forth came no more to the yard for work two years went by then one evening as sergey was standing at the ticket window of a theater paying for his seat he noticed a little man beside him with a coat collar of curly fur and a worn seal skin cap this little individual timidly asked the ticket seller for a seat in the gallery and paid for it in copper coins lushkov is that you cried sergey recognizing in the little man his former wood chopper how are you what are you doing how is everything with you all right i am a notary now and am paid 35 rubles a month thank heaven that's fine i am delighted for your sake i am very very glad lushkov you see you are my godson in a sense i gave you a push along the right path you know do you remember what a roasting i gave you eh huh? i nearly had you sinking into the ground at my feet that day thank you old man for not forgetting my words thank you too said lushkov if i hadn't come to you then i might still have been calling myself a teacher or a student to this day yes by flying to your protection I dragged myself out of a pit. I'm very glad indeed. Thank you for your kind words and deeds. I'm very grateful to you and to your cook. God bless that good and noble woman. You spoke finely then, and I shall be indebted to you to my dying day. But strictly speaking, it was your cook Olga who saved me. How is that? When I used to come to your house to chop wood, she used to begin. Oh, you sot you! You! Oh, you miserable creature! There is nothing for you but ruin. And then, she would sit down opposite me, and grow sad, look into my face, and weep. Oh, you unlucky man! There is no pleasure for you in this world and there will be none in the world to come you drunkard you will burn in hell oh you unhappy one and so she would carry on you know in that strain i can't tell you how much misery she suffered how many tears she shed for my sake but the chief thing was she used to chop the wood for me do you know sir that i did not chop one single stick of wood for you she did it all why this saved me why i changed why i stopped drinking at the sight of her i cannot explain i only know that owing to her words and noble deeds a change took place in my heart she set me right and i shall never forget it however it is time to go now there goes the bell lushkov bowed and departed to the gallery glossary copic also spelled k o p e c k copic russian coin equal to 100th of a ruble calumny the making of false and defamatory statements about someone in order to damage his or her reputation suppliant or supplicant a person making a humble plea to someone in power or authority
mendicant, beggar, swindling, cheating a person of money, perplexity, state of being puzzled, bewilderment, irresolutely, hesitantly, undecidedly, billet, here a thick piece of wood, waif, a homeless person, shovel, remove snow with a shovel, a tool resembling a spade with a broad blade and typically upturned sides, roasting, an informal or humorous word, here scolding, sot, a habitual drunkard, think about it, one, has Lushkov become a beggar by circumstance or by choice? 2. What reasons does he give to Sergei for his telling lies? 3. Is Lushkov a willing worker? Why then does he agree to chop wood for Sergei? 4. Sergei says, I am happy that my words have taken effect. Why does he say so? Is he right in saying this? 5. Lushkov is earning 35 rubles a month. How is he obliged to Sergei for this? 6. During their conversation, Lushkov reveals that Sergei's cook, Olga, is responsible for the positive change in him. How has Olga saved Lushkov? Talk about it. How can we help beggars or abolish begging? Suggested reading The Man with the Twisted Lip by Arthur Conan Doyle The Three Sisters by Anton Chekhov Moments. You were just listening to this English audio textbook for class 9th, narrated by Nivedita Sardar. Technical direction, Satish Lade. Sound recording, Amita Bhatti and Bati Langlingdo. Assistance in production, Dao Dayal Chaturvedi. Produced and presented by Ramesh Rani Sharma.